you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. This is Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go. Welcome, my ladies and gentlemen, my family, my Chris Voss Show family, the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mother in law. She never liked you anyway, and she wanted her daughter to marry the other guy. <laughs> ah, what are you going to do? So, guys, welcome to the big show. As always, we bring you the latest authors, the Pulitzer Prize winners, presidential advisors. We actually have one later today. All the, uh, what is it, governors, congressmen, you know, you name it. These folks have been on the show, and they bring to you a lifetime of knowledge that they disperse to you, and we call it the Chris Voss Show Glow. Stories of the life, and as we always say, Stories are the owner's manual to life. We have another gentleman on today, and he is going to be talking to you about how to become ultimately successful, make your first million. And it all comes down to working with Ron Douglas, the million dollar mentor, as he's built. He's on a mission to create 1,000 millionaires. Ron is the CEO of Mentoring Giants. He's on a mission to help 100 entrepreneurs reach their first 1 million. So you too could be part of that. With over 40 plus successful exec exits, his passion lies in guiding others to succeed. He helps people whose revenue is stagnant, struggle to scale their business, overwhelmed in constant com competition or companion. Overwhelm is a constant companion i'm not reading that right okay I'm trying to flip that in the third person you lack or if, if the people lack a clear roadmap at mentoring giants uh, they leverage the real world experience and insights for from discovery channels blue collar backers to transform these challenges into tangible results they cater to founders entrepreneurs and ceos with r's of ten thousand or above is that mmr mrrs there we go. Which sets us, which sets them apart. Only being a mentoring platform by a, led by a CEO with forty plus successful business ex, ex, exits, awarded with industry recognition and awards. Welcome to the show, Ron. How are you? Good, good. How are you doing, bud? Good, 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 good. So, uh, give us your dot com. Where can people find you on the interwebs? MentoringGiants dot com is probably the easiest place to find us. Uh, we're updating the website <laughs> actually today as we speak. But uh, yeah, uh, anybody that listens to this. Uh, It'll be mentoring giants. Most of awesome the sauce. Awesome sauce. And then tell us about the Discovery Channel connection with Blue Collar Backers. Yeah, yeah. So a couple of years back, I did a, a, a show on Discovery Channel called Blue Collar Backers and got to go and help a lot of small businesses. And, and honestly, that's the reason Mentoring Giants got launched was because mm -hmm. I had so many people reaching out to me after the show. I had no idea that I was going to get bombarded with that many uh, people <laughs> requesting help on businesses. And so I, I, I launched Mentoring Giants. You struck a vein. There you go. <laughs> so give us a 30,000 overview of what you guys do in your words at Mentoring Giants. You know, I sat back and I started realizing that just about everybody that I've ever met has the skill sets already in place right now uh, to be a millionaire. Mm. And they just don't have the puzzle pieces put in the right spots. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, I can literally take somebody that mops floors at a school and, and teach them how to start a cleaning company and create a million dollar business in, in a short time. So, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. I, I, I've realized just a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there just struggling or running in circles. And it just, it's, it's just a couple of small pieces that just need to be, need to be moved. And everybody can create a million dollar company. There you go. You know, I, I, I've seen that happen where I've been trying to get a business to work and sometimes it's a new startup, sometimes it's in the throes of recession and, and it won't work. And you keep moving those pieces around and suddenly it's just like a light switch goes on. You know, Absolutely. you're like, there's money coming in. This, this crap's working. What the hell? <laughs> Who? You know, it's kind of like what we used to say when we play golf and you hit a, you hit a perfect ball and you're like, remember what you did wrong, whatever that was. 
<laughs> like, did somebody push a button or something? But no, usually you kind of know what it is. You flip you flip a switch and like all of a sudden the machine turns on. You're like, oh, yeah, you'll, you'll know. Switch. There you go. <laughs> yep. You'll so know us, the second it happens. <laughs> give us a little bit more of your hero's journey. How did you grow up? Where how did you get the entrepreneurial bug? And uh, tell us a little bit about some of these exits and stuff that you did. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I'm the furthest from an entrepreneur you can possibly be. My dad was in the military for 22 years. Mm-hmm. And I was surrounded by military guys, you know, career, career military. And, you know, everybody was, you know, join the army, join the army, do your 20, you know, do this, do that. And I just, I just didn't, I just didn't mesh with that. And I could not figure out, I didn't meet my first entrepreneur until I was, oh, geez, like 23. Hmm. Um, And I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was, didn't know how to spell the word. I mean, I honestly, I I didn't know anything. Um, I, I was... At the time, I had um, at eighteen. I broke my back oh. and uh, was paralyzed from the waist down. And I had to learn to really? walk again. And, oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, it was tough. Wow. By nineteen, I was full recover, fully recovered. Wow! And I was, I was, you know, lifting and exercising and and trying to prove that I could do what I could do before. And mm. um, still, the military didn't want me uh, because I had broken my back. So I wow. joined the prison system. And I was a Texas prison guard. There you go. And, I was uh, going to ask you which side of the prison system you yeah, joined. You got to be yeah, careful yeah, when you say that. Yeah, yeah, right. I got to be careful. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was a prison guard in Texas, and uh, by by at nineteen, and by twenty, I was on the riot team, and by twenty one, I was training and head of the riot team. Holy um, crap. And uh, yeah, that was interesting times. And uh, I, I worked death row actually in Huntsville, Texas. Uh, wow. I worked at several of the Supermax prisons in Texas. All the Supermax prisons that got opened up in the late 90s, I was there and opened them all up. And Those are wild. And, uh, yeah, that was a little yeah, wild time. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was actually a mistake, uh, you know, that uh, that I even learned what an entrepreneur was. I, my, uh, I was short on money. <laughs> mm-hmm. And my dad, uh, you know, was always into classic cars and always taught us how to work on cars. And, and on the way to work one day, I was looking. There was a wrecking yard, and I'd always pass this wrecking yard on my on my way to work. And and man, I was broke. I needed money, and we didn't have enough money to make it to the end of the month. Holy crap! And uh, I, I pulled in there, and I told the guy, I said, "Hey, man, I said I, I see you got a wrecking yard. I said, do you do you need any wor- you know workers? I said, uh, you know, I'd love to help out or do what I can. And he's like, yeah, I pay daily and day labor and. Mm-hmm. And you can come out here tomorrow, start tomorrow. I said, perfect, I'll be here tomorrow. So I started cutting old gas tanks out of cars that were getting crushed. Oh, really? In, te- in Texas, like 110 degrees. <laughs> oh, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah now, were, you doing that as a spare, were, they, were you doing that as a spare time job on top of your prison? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I did it on my days off. Yeah, so in the prison, we worked four, we worked four days on, four days off, 12-hour mm-hmm. shifts. Mm-hmm. So on my four days off, I worked at the I worked at the wrecking there. There you go. And, and man, this is the first time I ever met an entrepreneur. And uh, I was like, man, this guy owns the whole wrecking yard. He owns his house. He owns his shop. And I, I finally just asked him, I said, hey, man, I, how do I do this? And, uh, he, you know, we went to lunch. We sat down and talked about it. And he showed me how to start flipping cars. You know, we were buying, you know, some of these cars were too nice to crush. And, and I would take them and I'd get them running again and I'd take them over to the prison while I was working and park them in the parking lot out there with a for sale sign in them and I started selling them. Oh, wow. and, and before I knew it, man, I was, I had 20, 30 cars out and sold and half of them I'm owner financing and taking payments on. And I had a regular little small business going outside the prison and, and uh, out in the parking lot. And, and I finally said, why? Once I learned I could make my own money without a boss, you know, I always thought, you know, hey, you need a job. You need money? Go get a job, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and once I learned that I didn't need a job, I didn't need a boss in order to make money, man, that was it. I was gone. Off to the races. Wow. No, so, you know, basically, it's that old saying, necessity is the mother of all invention. Absolutely. You know, so, so I met my met my first entrepreneur at 23. Mm-hmm. Um Started my own business at 24, mm-hmm. made my first million by 26. There you go. Uh, 26. Yeah. In, a, in the old oh. brick and mortar world. 
in the brick and mortar world packs you know even that's, i was i was that's a whole bleeding different edge internet <laughs> yeah it. back, back when i take a picture of a classic car and i'd send it to somebody it'd take them 30 minutes for it to download you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh but yeah i was uh I started out, you know, flipping cars, and then before I knew it, I was—I mean, I was shipping the classic cars all over the world. I was shipping them huh. to Australia, New Zealand, Denmark. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I was buying up classic cars all over Texas and shipping them everywhere. You know, I'd ship them to New York and Minnesota, and and uh, but it was a pendulum swing, right? And so, you know, I, I went from not knowing how to be an entrepreneur to that's all I did twenty four seven and. Mm-hmm. Dang near, dang near, cost me my marriage. So I had to slow down and and get, um, you know, get get uh, you know, get more <laughs> get more. Uh, what's the word? <sighs> Tactical about how I did things so that it didn't cost me uh, so much time. And so I I uh, started focusing on that and and um, learned to to bring the pendulum in the middle and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and get a, get a better work life balance. And I and anyway, long story short, I sold that company and I, I moved on to other other businesses. And and um, you know, I've had you know w- once I it's so funny because once once you learn how to do it, you can spot problems with other businesses. And yeah, and I was actually you know that was another accident. The guys like I'm going to sell this business, and I was looking at it. And I could see all the problems with the business, and I was like, man, I'll buy it. Man. So I bought this business and. And uh, built it up, turned it around. I was like, "Hey, this is kind of like flipping cars." <laughs> so, just flip businesses. Like, this, yeah, I just flip businesses instead. So I was like, "Man, this is a lot easier than flipping cars." So you know, I I just started doing that, and uh, yeah, before I knew it, I, I had had forty businesses under my belt. Wow, that's awesome, man! And so, were you just flipping small businesses locally and? People yeah, for sale. Yeah, and you trouble. know, I'd buy a cleaning company, or I'd buy a mm-hmm. landscape company, or you know, things that were in trouble. Uh, you know, I'd buy them. I bought a greenhouse company, and you know, and, and you know, so sometimes it, it just depends on the company. But you know, I, I've you know, that, like that greenhouse company, I bought that, and he was out of I don't remember Kentucky or something, and mm-hmm. I bought that company and shipped it over to Colorado, and built it up to. You know, when when I bought it, he was he wasn't doing very uh, you know, very well because he was he, he couldn't figure out the shipping. That's the problem. <laughs> and and uh, when you can't ship, uh, you know, how do you ship yeah. a greenhouse, right? And so <laughs> True, yeah. I broke them down into kits and put them on pallets and figured out the shipping prior. Uh-huh. And and that was all the solving it needed. Huh? It was just that, that was the only thing it needed. Whoa. Instantly, we went to over Whoa. you know we went to six figures a month out of that thing, and and it was just. Man, we were just going to town, and then we went to seven figures a month, and it was like okay. So, and then I, once I get things figured out, it drives my wife nuts. Once I get things figured out and it's smooth operating, I get bored. And, you know, you so get bored. I sold it. Yeah. <laughs> At least you keep the wife. You know. Uh, my problem is the reason I've been single all my life is I get bored. So, uh, right, is the spice of life, ladies and gentlemen. I took it to heart. No, that's that's really interesting. We used to do a thing we found after we assembled a lot of companies and we were still bored. And and uh, so we would run an ad in the paper saying we loan money to entrepreneurs who are in trouble. And then we get the applications and we just cherry pick stuff. You know, there'd be so much stuff that I learned this. I learned how to do it from uh, basically commercial real estate guys. And they would they would show me how there was, you know, there was biz- a lot of businesses that were asset rich, but cash poor. And, you know, because they they spent all their money and their model still wasn't working or maybe it stopped working. Yeah, it was interesting to go into them. And then, you know, some guys, you know, they just they just won't let go. They're like that. They're like that, uh, like that raccoon and where the red fern grows, where they will not let that shiny tin piece go until they die. That's right. And, Love that movie. <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie. It helped me save a lot of money on a lawsuit one time. Just that just that book. But uh, that's that's a great way to do it. So now you've converted your services to where you're helping other people and you coach them. Tell us how that yes. works. And people can well because, you. like you just mentioned, I mean, it's exactly what you just mentioned. You know, guys that don't want to let go, right? And so yeah. we, you know, I, I build everything to sell, um, and mm-hmm. so I teach. That's what I teach. I teach everybody else to you know do the same thing, right? And so if you're <laughs> if you're the if you're the keystone of your business, if you're the you know if you're the 
the thing that keeps your business together, then you don't have a business. You get a job. That's and true. So, That's true. No so, one's going to buy you because right because they can't buy you out. You're the you're the lynch exactly. Man. I was just I was just talking with one of my clients this morning about this. It's like it's like oh you know and, and he, you you know you're in trouble when all you're doing is bragging about your what you you bring to the table because it's like you know, if you're that great and nobody else can do what you do then how are we going to sell this business you know what I mean? yeah. so we've had so a number I, of people I, I, on I the show had to change his think, thinking yeah you know, we we've had a number of people on the show that teach about exiting and and how to prepare your business at the very beginning but it it's funny one thing i did find was we you know i go look at a business and you know i'd go walk the walk through the business and stuff and we'd already kind of gotten the paperwork and the books and stuff it was it was just wild when if you called up somebody and said hey can we see your P&Ls?" they'd be like "Fuck you that's proprietary information and but when they were in trouble man they needed to loan money they'd tell us everything we needed to know about running a, their business and so we already had the P&Ls and, you know, we'd always know, kind of know what's going on. We'd have a sniff of it. And then I go to the office to find that half the family works there and, you know, half the family's robbing them blind and not doing anything, taking paychecks. And, you know, I, so then I make them an offer, but usually nine times out of 10, I don't know about you, but we'd have to make them a walking offer. So it was either one of two things. It was either like you're three months from bankruptcy and you're just not realizing it and three to six months whatever from bankruptcy you just don't realize that your model's all fucked up here's what we're going to do we'll take over your business save your credit save your life save probably your marriage you know but you you're gonna have to go back to mcdonald's or wherever the fuck you came from and uh, and uh, or sometimes it was giving some walking money if they had some valuable assets and stuff you know here's here's 10 grand take a hike we'll save your shit because you know, there's a benefit to saving your credit and your marriage and I don't oh, know yeah. and, and everything else that you put into a business. I mean, you crash a business, you know, you're going to hurt your credit. So good luck with that. And, and there are just some people, they're just not at the point where they can be self-employed. I think, I think you're right. Everyone does have the puzzle pieces, but I think there's some people that they need to develop the, the mindset a little bit more uh, to get into it. But what, what was funny about it all is, 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 a lot of times the trip would be, they're like, well, Chris is interested in it. There must be gold here somewhere in this mine. Right. And, <laughs> and I, and I, so familiar. <laughs> you know, and I explained to him, we have an empire of companies, so we're going to roll it into something. You know, sometimes we, it was just like taking their business, you know, we owned a mortgage company and, you know, just rolling in. So then we just needed their furniture <laughs> for expansions. And, so they would be like, yeah, there must be gold here. I, I just got to figure out where Chris thinks it is, you know? And so I give him a first right of refusal contract, you know, give him 10 bucks or whatever. And I say, look, I'm going to give you a first right of refusal, which means I want you have to call me when you want to sell this company first. But here's the true thing. Don't call me a week before fucking bankruptcy. Don't call me a week before bankruptcy. You got to do this now or in the next month or, you know, two yeah. weeks or something. You, you, got, you can't be fucking around. And... Yeah. They always ask too. They was like, "Are you gonna fire my family?" Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Fire <laughs> you. <laughs> fire your family. I know exactly the fucking problem that's right here right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, I and I tell them, I'd be like, "You're the problem, so you have to go." Can I stay on? No. No. You. You're just. You're just a lead weight. And I'm not. And and I'm gonna probably change your whole dream around. So you're not gonna like it anyway. But you're not gonna get it. You know, I'm going to, you're messing with my thing. You're, you don't have a thing. It's bankrupt. So, you know, they'd always call me week before bankruptcy. Hi, I'm going to the bankruptcy always. court. Do you want to still buy them my business? Always. Oh, they always did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't understand why they wait that long, but yeah, they always do. And then, uh, you know, well, the one thing I did learn though, was that by getting a business, a, a good deal on a business, Mm -hmm. opened up that entire industry sometimes because sometimes you can yeah. leverage that you know you buy one landscaping business and there's four in town you go hmm mm -hmm. and so you, you leverage that and you go buy the other two or three mm -hmm. before you know it you you own the whole landscaping industry in, in you know in the town and uh, right. you can you can leverage it pretty well and so a lot of times i did that you know where i would buy one and then i start looking at others in that same industry and before i knew it i was owning three or four 
Yeah, once you can dial in the the perfect combination. So when people reach out to you, you're you're on a mission now to make all these millionaires. When people yeah. reach out to you, how do they onboard with you? How do they handshake with you? How do they find out if they're a fit for both you and them? Yeah, we, we always sit down. We do about an hour discussion. We have a discussion on it. And I, you know, I really wanted to understand where they're coming from and and whether they're teachable or not. That's the, you know, that's the big thing, really? you know? See, that's yeah. what separates those other guys who won't give it yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. They, they got to be teachable, banker. you know? They got to, you know, yeah. they got to come and say, hey, man, I, I, you know, I'll do whatever you say kind of thing. Not that, you know, not to that point, but, you know, something like that along those yeah. lines. And and, uh, and if they start acting like that and they're, and they're teachable, you know, because there's a lot of people out there that got a good business. Let's say you, you, you're making 150 grand, and when I say a million dollar and create millionaires, I'm talking about real millionaires, not on paper. I'm talking about not crypto million. Yeah, I'm talking about million dollars in the bank account, not not this nonsense where yeah, I've got a million dollar business, but I'm only you know I'm only making forty thousand a year. No, no, you're no, fake it till you make it. Yeah. Uh, no, no, we're done with that nonsense. So, yeah. Uh, yeah I, okay. So, there's a lot of people out there that are making, you know, six figures, hundred, hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, but they can't figure out how to actually make the million, and yeah. and they're close, you know. And, and so it's just moving a couple of those puzzle pieces and getting those guys in place. And once they realize it, and and a lot of times getting it out of their own head. And once they once they realize that. Um, yeah, you could take their business to, you know, multi million dollars, and you know, which means you know, million dollar take home then at that point. And so, that that uh, that's a life changer, man. Because once, in my opinion, once you break the million dollar mark and you're actually making a million dollars, you got million dollars in the bank. You you can you you're, you're smart enough at that point. You can leverage. You can move things around. You can mm -hmm. you can make big moves at that point. And uh, you're job, you're capable. Of, yeah, it gives you options. You're capable of handling it from there so my goal is to get people that are making six figures up to seven seven eight figures mm -hmm. so that's a that's the net out of their business it's not the revenue yeah yeah i'm talking no. net. Yeah, yeah yeah not yeah uh, yeah no i'm uh, yeah anybody can make a million dollar business in <laughs> three do. months but yeah but uh, you i know. see that all the time with coaches that are like i make a million dollar business and you're like you're like but how much do you net like right yeah i mean yeah a million dollar <laughs> revenue sure yeah Go for it, yeah. but I mean, for all I know, you're upside down half a million. Like, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> we see that you can see that with publicly traded stocks how those work. So, um, yep. yeah, it's always funny how that rolls. So, did they work with you like on an hour by hour basis? Do you have like a coach? Yeah, yeah, we do coaching. They... Yeah, we got a coaching program. I choose about six months. Honestly, I don't. I, I... If you can't figure it out in six months, then you ain't gonna figure it out. So yeah, I, I'm I'm not one of those coaches that wants you on and wants you forever. Um, you know, if you can't if you can't learn it in six months, we're out. So we get in there, I teach you for six months. I do one on one for one month, mm -hmm. um, and then it's it's pretty much five months with, with the group coaching and right. online. But uh, after that, you should have it dialed in. Um, most guys have it. In, three months um, yeah. and, and they're and they're capable and they're off and running at that point sometimes so. it's just moving a few things around like you said just, it yeah, really is yep yep and, it, and and the lights just go on man it's just it's just funny as it's funny as crap and sometimes you've been looking at the whole time going should i turn that dial You're like not nah, that was a naked turn. <laughs> let's turn these other ones and then this hey you're, you're well we turned all the other dials this is the only one left if i can turn that yep. dial <laughs> Yeah. And sometimes it's just belief, honestly. I mean, you know, you know, they're in a small town and every other, I don't know, uh, dry cleaner in town is, is making six figures. So they don't think they can make seven figures. And then once you show them the business model where you can make seven figures, they're going, oh, I just got to do this and this. And you're, I can get to seven figures. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it's just like simple innovation sometimes. Yeah, then... I, took, I took a laundry. <laughs> The guy owned a laundromat, and I took him to a million dollars in thirty days. And wow. It literally changed it because he was doing like three hundred thousand uh, a year, and but he had all these machines, and they're shut down in the middle of the night, you know. And I was like, "Man, hire a crew!" And before he knew it, he was he was washing sheets for hotels and cloth tables for restaurants and and all this stuff at night, and then. He li he lived in a 
in a town that had a huge RV parks in the in the in the uh, in the summer. Mm-hmm. And so he did delivery, and you, you start driving around RV parks with a bunch of retirees and doing laundry service, pick up and drop off laundry services. I mean, before he, <laughs> he had he had tripled his business in like thirty days. Wow, that that's simple and that easy. That's just yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's that easy sometimes. So give us your final pitch as we go out to uh, consumers so they can pick it up. What What's the minimum they need to be at again? To I, I, I like to, I mean, if you're making a hundred thousand a year, that's a, that's a, that's a good start. I can get you from a hundred thousand. I can get you to a million probably within six months. Wow. Uh, you know, was... within reason, but I mean, I, within a year you'll get to there, but uh, six months of training and you'll, you'll, you'll have it. You'll be dialed in there you go. And, and you're well on your way. And then the beauty of it is they get your training, so they're going to kind of learn how to fix and repair all these businesses that you've been in, that you've exited yep. and stuff. Yep. And, 40, uh, like I said, I've done it 40 times in every industry you can think of. So, I mean, from <laughs> blue-collar businesses to online businesses to just about everything else. So, I mean, if, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So, I mean, I, it, it's really not that hard. It's really just getting systems in place. I like how simple you make it. Thank you very much, Ron, for coming on the show. I mean, it really is because once you understand the basic mechanics of of business, it it it's there. So, thank you very much, Ron, for coming on the show. We we appreciate you coming on. You bet. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. There you go, and uh, continued success in creating one thousand millionaires. So, book a call with Ron Douglas there. Give us your dot com, Ron, before we go out. MentoringGiant dot com, all one word. There we go. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss. Subscribe to the big LinkedIn newsletter and the 130,000 LinkedIn group over there. Also go to, I think Chris Foss won on TikTok. I think we cover that. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. And that should happen.